you get your Milano jersey in the mail yet? No, but I got my Alyssa Milano life-size cutout. All things considered, not a bad Milano to have if you're not going to have Matt. Exactly. Or the cookie. Exactly. She's crazy. Don't care. You just watched the movie Fear. <laughs> just watched Charmed. <laughs> Ever hear the joke? Who is the boss? Who's the boss? Oh. Tony Danza, <laughs> and ride with us on YouTube and don't forget to check out live play-by-play -play of the Bills season coming up on Sportscaster. Ladies and gentlemen of Hashtag Nation, uh, before you watch the video, Paul and I have a very special announcement. We've been banging the drum for this for a couple weeks mm -hmm. and time's running out and spaces are running out. So mm -hmm. if you want a chance to get into the uh, giveaway that we're doing with all the Bills merch and donate to a wonderful uh, foundation, um, Paul's going to give you some information on that right now. <laughs> so in the description, you're going to find our PayPal, our Venmo, and our Cash App. It, uh, we're doing your traditional football squares, right? Uh, it is $5 a square, a maximum of five squares per game. Now, we're doing the next four games, right? Yep, so you can get them. into them all right now if you want. So you got the Ravens, the Steelers, the, Steelers, the, the Patriots, Patriots, and, and the, the Jets, Jets okay. right? So those four games. Uh, we're giving away autographed merch. It's stuff that we got signed for you. And the great thing is it's totally random. So you don't have to pick what square you want. We're going to randomly assign them. And we're also randomly assigning the prizes. Exactly. So we don't know what you're going to win either. Nope. Uh, we're going to reveal those on our post game or for doing the play-by-play -play on uh, Sportscaster or YouTube. We're going to open them right at halftime. Yep, absolutely. Um, and we're going to send them to you and ship them to you. But you want to get in now because we're trying to raise $2,000 for the Punt Foundation and spots are really starting to fly out. So if you want to get in on a chance to win some pretty awesome autographed merch, I'm talking a Levi Wallace autograph helmet, a Devin Singletary autograph mini helmet. Ed uh, Oliver. An Ed Oliver autograph mini helmet. A Harrison Phillips uh, mini football. Um, Trey a White. Trey. No, with Trey? Are we good? Do we have a mini football for Trey White? I don't know. We do have a mini football for Trey We got White. a bunch of stuff. We got a bunch of stuff that we're giving away. Yeah, we but did. it's Bill's merch, and you're donating to a great cause, the Punt Foundation, mm -hmm. Brian Mormon's Punt Foundation. We're working in conjunction with 26 Shirts and uh, David Adams. So we want to do this. You guys have given us so much. We want to try to give back. Yep. And uh, we're and you can win some sweet Bill stuff in, yep. in the process. So. Oh, we'd love to send it to you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd so. love to send it anywhere in the world. We don't care. We sent one giveaway to Italy. We don't care. Yeah. So we'll send it wherever, wherever you live. That's where it'll go. We <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We yeah. sent that. Uh, yeah. The autograph Thurman and Tom, uh, Thomas helmet. Yeah. Um, so after you're done subscribing and watching the video, please click click down in the links. We mm -hmm. got PayPal, Venmo, and Cash App. And uh, let's go to the video. Yeah, I, culture, keeping culture, I think, is about kind of taking care of your own, right? And that's one thing. We could talk about the Bills' culture and how they've built this team. They've built this team off of short-length free agent contracts, right? It seems like that's going to be a mold going forward, mm -hmm. is that they're not afraid to sign guys to one- to two-year deals who are looking to kind of restart things. Unfortunately, as Bills fans, we know that that's sometimes a dangerous path to follow because Bills have been doing that for years. Because those guys auditioned for the rest of the league. Right, exactly. So, and you're starting to see Jerry Hughes was the only guy they've extended now. Yeah. Like, they haven't signed. No. This team hasn't been together long enough with being mm -hmm. a McDermott to, okay, what are they going to sign their draft picks to? Right. Um, it, it's so it's so fascinating to think about because it's the great unknown. Mm -hmm. I know you were talking to me a little bit about – you know, what do you do with Milano and Edmonds' deals? Yeah. Do you, do you have them align with each other? I, I think that's that hurts you from a standpoint of if you wanted to lose one of them, mm -hmm. then you would put them on the, same, on the same path. Right. But I think you have to stagger them almost like Hyde and Poyer mm -hmm. so that if you can't re-sign a guy, mm -hmm. you have the other one there mm -hmm. to take care of the slack while you try to get someone else right. in that position. And people are going to talk about all the cap space the Bills have, but it's probably not a bad idea to start buying out some of these early years and these rookie deals. Yes. Like with Matt Milano, buy out his fourth year. Buy it out. Pay him something nice. You're going to give him a raise. Four. Exactly. You're going to give him a raise. So what? But remember, any, let's say the Bills were to sign Matt Milano to a four-year deal um, right You know, January 1st. Okay. Um, you'd have to watch the deal to see, are they 
are they buying out that last year and did they renegotiate the salary of that year? Right. Or is it a true extension where they're going to make him play out on his rookie contract and then the new salaries for him start what would be year five and moving forward? So we're yeah. going to have to watch to see how those contracts are structured. But we don't even know how this team's going to move forward with re-signing guys. You're right. Jerry Hughes is the only one that we've seen. Mm-hmm. That's it. Outside of that, we don't know how they're going to handle this. I mean, it would be tough enough to try to figure out how they would want to sign guys and how they would want to stagger it and what the, what the amounts they would – what market yeah. value would be. Yeah. Plus – We don't know. Well, we don't know. We can, we can guess. We can, we can make our best – you know, um, we can take our best you know, analysis of it. But – the biggest freaking wrench in the whole thing is at the end of the 2020 season, the new CBA is going to be negotiated. So yep. how are those contracts going to be affected? Right. Are guys going to put off getting signed? You have the two schools of thought here. Mm-hmm. Are guys going to put off being signed because they want to know what this new CBA does? Right. Even though the CBA has hurt them in the past. Or number two, are they going to try to get their money now mm-hmm. before the new CBA comes right. out? Right. And I think that's the more likely scenario. Is well, the guys that want to get their money now. And again, that falls into a very, very you know, a very, very scary scenario because you take a look at guys who are going to be coming up on free agency around that time. Yeah. And it's going to be personal preference. Some players are going to say, nope, I'm going to bet on myself whenever CBA is negotiated. We'll just deal with it then. It might be a short, you know, might be a short free agent window, but I think I'm going to get paid top dollar. Um, I think Shaq Lawson's a great example of this. You did not pick up Shaq Lawson's fifth-year option. Look at the animal that has showed up to play for you on Sundays. It could have been a motivational factor for him. Maybe it was motivation, right? But, if you don't, if you pick up his option, maybe this isn't the Shaq Lawson you get. Now the question, the next question is: Now that they see how he can perform, what what do you do? Are we are we a little wor- are we in a Vince Wilfork scenario where you're like, well, I'm a little worried about paying him. Because I, I think that's a because Shaq's going to be a free agent. And I think the I, ultimate X factor that no one's going to take into consideration is they're going to see how he plays in the field. They're going to see his impact. He's playing. He's playing behind Trent Murphy. Okay, mm-hmm. first of all, so he's not the starter right no, now. He is so not. we need to take that into account. Number one, number two, his snap counts. Mm-hmm. They're they're hovering right around the thirty percent range. Mm-hmm. So how much do you really pay a guy? Albeit a former first rounder that mm. could be in the, his agent can be in his head as far as that goes. Mm. Not, not gonna, I'm not gonna talk down upon him. Number one, because he could kill me. Number two, because he's he's playing so well. Right. But he's playing well in 30 percent of the snaps. So, a guy that's going to garner 40, 50 million dollars from the defensive end position has to play 70. Right. He has not proven that yet. Yeah, it's right now with the way that he's playing. Teams are going to look at it and say, okay, well, he's playing 38 percent of the snaps. Imagine if he played 70, right? Yeah, but then you wouldn't have him as fresh. I get, oh, I get it. Diminishing returns are out there. But we know that there's teams out there that literally just go, well, we're going to triple his production. Oh, they will. Yeah. They will. And they'll pay him accordingly. So Shaq Lawson's a very dangerous player to have uh, from a salary standpoint because there's a guy you should just, if you're going to re-sign him, you got to talk. you got to be talking to him right now. If you're really, if you're really, really thinking about getting him, you got to get him now. How strong is the culture where do you think it's to the point? I know it's early. Do you think it's to the point where he would accept less money playing for the Bills than more money playing somewhere else? I, that's what I, that was going to be my clarifying question. Oh, I was okay. just, I was, that's what I was going to ask you. But, <laughs> well, what exactly did you, did you say there? Um, I don't know, man. Like, I, we hear so much. We see so many horror stories, and, and Shaq is privy to a lot of those horror stories because look at the locker room he's in, right? Yeah. He's got a bunch of transplants in there of guys who went somewhere, and it just was not a good move for them, right? Or he has transplants that are in Buffalo right now succeeding. Like, hey, if I go to a team, I could succeed. That's it's a good point. Not necessarily the Bills. Yeah. But. That's a good point. From the fans' perspective. You look at this team without Jordan Phillips and Shaq Lawson next year. Yeah. Does that worry you? It does. Quite a bit? It does. Yeah, it, it worries does. me. So if you have to make a choice right now, Phillips or, or uh, Lawson, who do you pick? Oh, man. That's is a it, tough one. Is that, it's ridiculous, right? Because you, you can almost put him in the same category, right? Phillips came here, to, and his first game was against Miami, the team that had just caught him. He was already amped about yeah, it. Yeah, and he, and he was just absolutely balls to the wall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So... Part of him is saying, I need to show everybody that they made a mistake. Uh 
now the question is when when does that stop when does that wear out is he there i don't think so i mean he's playing at at a phenomenal level but think, you don't want to pay a guy off six games. No, but the, the system that he's playing within, I think, is tailored to his strengths. He's mm-hmm. not being asked to do a bunch of different things. No. They're dividing the uh, the responsibilities of the two defensive tackles in there, mm-hmm. okay? You eat bodies for me, please, right. and stop the run. Mm-hmm. We don't care about the pass. We'll take care of the pass. Mm-hmm. You eat bodies and stop the run. I can do that. Yeah, but for a run stopper, look at the sack production. Exactly. What, has he got, like seven? Ooh, that bird He made, made it. it. No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't? Uh, <laughs> Stupid. It's like, ooh, shiny, shiny objects. Squirrel. He has he has been, because teams, I guess, they try to leave him one up when mm-hmm. Oliver's on the other side of him. Right. You know, sometimes. Well, um, and Ed Oliver's showing people you can't do that either. No, you can't. Not no. anymore. So He's starting to figure it out. Is the success of Oliver going to be tied to the future of, of Jordan Phillips? See, I think. Is that huge or what? I think it is. Does the does Star Latulale's roster spot tied to Jordan Phillips. Yes. Yeah, I think it does. We talked about this before. Yeah, I think it does. You're going to take a $7.6 million dead money bomb. If you designate Star as a post-June 1st cut next year, let's just say that's in their plans. Right. All right. You're, you have the ability, you have the cap available to take that hit right you now. You sure do. And correct me if I'm wrong, which, which I know you will. Yeah. Can they split that over two years? Well, that's how the post works, right? So you take like two point... It's like a 60-40 split, basically, right? Okay. So, uh, the way that it works out for Star. So, you It'd take like... 2.6 and then... Um, right, and then the 5. balance. 2. Right, yeah, and then the balance the following Which isn't year. that bad. I mean, no, as far as that's a dead money bad. bomb coming that's off of... Bad. I mean, at the end of a third year of a $50 million deal, yeah. that's what you're worried about. I'd want to go back and, and look at his snap count next to Star's to see how often they're on the field together. They're, they're, it's pretty... You could you could bank on every first and second down when it's a run, they're there. Yeah. Um, so the the problem that in lies is because there's so many X factors that go on. Okay, if you don't resign Lawson, mm-hmm. if you decide to pick between Lawson and Phillips, and I think we may have talked about this before. Does does uh, does Ed Oliver beef up if you decide to, to sign Lawson? Does he beef up to play tackle, or do you decide to pay Jordan Phillips? And then you keep Oliver at the weight he is and have him rotate in at defensive Oliver line. could play all over the line he with can. where he is right now. He can. Yeah, he could play all over the, where he is right now. And everybody kind of knew that he was a little bit leaner than most defensive yeah. tackles because he was playing a nose in college, and everybody goes, well, that's not going to work in no, the not NFL. Not at 275. No, that's not going to work. Um, he's so athletic, man. It's tough. That's the thing. We don't have a big enough history on being a McDermott. To really be able to lock it in because there's a lot of options here. Well, there, and then you still have to talk about Trey White because Trey White is coming up soon. And we do have history, though. What do you mean? Being a McDermott. Okay. Their allegiance to first round defensive tackles. Oh, yeah. Stars yeah. here. For right. Crying out loud. I mean, that's if he yeah. be Coney Ely, you would too. <laughs> but yeah, you, you make a great point. Um, in, uh, in Trey White. I mean, that's, that's the. That's the biggest contract you're going to have. Yep. Um, but we haven't seen who they're going to sign, how they're going to sign them, what deals they're going to do. Right. Do they go five years, six years, some of these guys? Do they only sign the three-year deals? Do they, they take- make them play out their rookie deals? There's some organizations that refuse to talk to players until they, they finish their rookie deals. Sometimes. But that's it's an organizational philosophy. Organizations that do that already have a winning culture. They No, they need a winning culture in order to sustain – being able to have such an asinine theory and approach to football. <laughs> Oakland wins, you know, two and fourteen, and they're like, "Listen, we don't talk to players till after they finish out their rookie deal." Every player is going to be like, "Bro, you won two games this year. What are you talking about?" <laughs> I looked at a lot of the free agents coming up next year, and uh, there's probably guys you'll like, guys you won't like. It's mm-hmm. fine, but I wouldn't want anybody but the players that are on this team. Right? Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. And so maybe those guys garner the most attention. Phillips will garner a lot of attention oh, yeah. next year. Phillips and Lawson are going to eat each other on free agency. Oh, my God. They're going to eat each other on free agency. you got to make a decision, though, if you're Buffalo. Yeah. you got to make it soon, too. I really feel like, um, you know, you want to keep win- the winning culture going. You don't want to pay for short-term production, though, right? Just because you're winning, th- this could all turn south very quickly. 
when you start talking about contracts. Yes. Right? Because you're not talking about 12 weeks into the season. You're talking another 30, 40, 50 games. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot at stake. There's, there's a lot at stake. Plus, being it said on the Embedded Series, like, the guys see what you pay them. Mm -hmm. Guys see what you pay them. And right. And that's... That's understandable. Ooh. If you decide to pay Jordan Phillips right now, everyone else knows about that. It could be could turn into a distraction rather than a positive. Okay, how about this? Take go down this rabbit hole with me. Oh boy, what if you're looking at? Let's see the Bills hypothetical situation. I know a lot of Bills fans are going to be mad at me for even suggesting this. Let's That's say the Bills fair. drop the next two games. Okay. Right. So you lose the next two. So now you're at nine and five. You're going in. You're going into the Patriots game, right? Yeah. Morale is going to be not great. No. Right? Is that when you re-sign one of these guys? Because if you do it then, players might look at it and say, okay, look, you know what? It's They're taking care of the players that they want. They, they're taking care of the players that, that have earned it. Players are all about respect. What have you earned? Right? What have you earned? So if the Bills drop the next two, do you think the Bills – Resign somebody. Well, if you drop the next two, early. what do you, what do you, what have you earned if you drop two games? No, what I'm saying is, from a culture stand, from a locker oh. room standpoint, the like players will look at these it. games affect them, right? The the, oh. lock, the locker room will look at it and say, you know what, he he deserved that. I know we dropped the last two, but he played great. He deserved that. I think it depends because we've been we've been mentioning and, and, and banging the door down for Phillips and Lawson. Mm -hmm. You didn't pay Lawson, and this is the result you get. If yeah. you pay Phillips. He may find that his writing on the wall and just kind of mail in the last maybe two games. Maybe um, I don't think you change anything right now. No, I know I we don't, talk no. about you know you want to sign Milano now. I think Milano is a different story. Milano, Dawkins, uh, White, um, and I think oh, I always forget it's Hyder Poyer that that are be coming up soon. You know what I mean? I don't remember which one it is. And either. the craziest part about it is, and I mention this all the time. Is he going to pay a guy for what he's going to give you now for what he gave you? Right. Unfortunately, that's the business of the NFL. Yeah. So the, when Hyde and Poyer are up there in their 30s. Maybe they've already given you their, their contract years, value. You know right. what I mean? So, uh, I mean, they're they're getting severely, they're severely underpaid. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you think that some team but that's the will game. pay them. But that's the game. That is that is the business. That is the business of the NFL. And that, that's how it works. Um, with the amount of talent that comes out every year as far as from a defensive standpoint, we have to remember the Bills aren't going to be drafting high. Right. <laughs> nope. We're just thinking, oh, we can get a guy in the top ten. No, you're no, not. No, you're not. You're going to get a guy. The 20 and up are, are looking for one or two pieces mm -hmm. to change their team. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. Yep. That's why all these guys like slide into that, you know, mm -hmm. if they don't have a guy graded out that yep. falls to them, they're going to trade out of there. Mm -hmm. And the Bills might trade out and get a couple second-round picks. Who knows? But it's, it's interesting to – it's interesting to have this draft talk and the culture yeah. with the team when they're nine and three. Yeah, rather it is. than three and nine. It's round. totally like, different. Who are we gonna it? draft? I know. How are we gonna fix this? What's <laughs> what's wrong? How are we gonna fix it? No, we're not having that conversation anymore. It's no. it's about how do you how do you keep this going, right? Because they've built this team on on the foundation of we're gonna draft, we're gonna find guys that nobody else wants, mm -hmm. and their commitment to them is very short. So the only downside, the only pullback is you're not making a massive investment in a player that other teams have, have given up on, right? You're not making a huge investment in them. But on the flip side of that, it's not a, you're, that's right. You're not making a big investment in them. So you're going to have that conversation of are we, are we, what are we doing here next year with mm -hmm. this guy? Um, and it's, it's, a real, it's a real fascinating way to build the team in a short period of time. And they've done a great job with it. You can't argue with the results. No. Nine to three? 